Now we'll come down and I knew there was an edge of pavement along here and I'm going to use another command because I know there's a slight radius to the road, to the edge of the road and you can perhaps see that in the point data. I want to use another command called best fit circle. I'm going to go to the Kogo menu. So we're going to come down to best fit and we're going to choose circle. And it's asking us down at the command line do we want a 2D or a 3D circle? I'm going to take the default 2D. It says select points from screen or by point number. I'm just going to say screen, which is the default, so I'll press enter. Now it says select the entities. Okay, I'm going to window those two. I know that's one of them. That's one of them. And I'm going to pan. And I'm going to select that one. So those are all the points that are associated with the edge of my road. So I'm done selecting entities, so I press enter, and it says enter a design center point, or enter for none, In my case is going to be none. It tells me what the radius is, and it gives me a table showing just how close a fit it is and we come back to the drawing and you can see that circle did its very best to pass through each and every one of those points and it did a pretty good job so I'm happy with that so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that as the near edge of my road in my field notes I happen to know that the road is 20 feet wide so I'm gonna use that offset command once more so we go to the edit menu, we find offset, select standard, and we want to put in a distance. And this time we can directly put in that distance at the command line. So my field node said the road was 20 feet wide, so I put in 20, press enter, and now it says select the entity to offset, and now it wants to know which side to offset. I could offset it towards my points, but I know that the road goes the other way, so I select over here. And there it drew the far edge of the road. But if we zoom out, you can see we have two huge circles. Clearly we don't need all of those circles, all of that circle, and we need to trim it back so we're going to draw a line off here somewhere and we're going to draw another line over here and we're going to use that command we learned earlier called trim edit trim and it says select cutting entities well that's going to be one that's going to be one and that will be those will be the only cutting entities select enter to complete that and now it wants to to know which entities are going to be trimmed and you'll remember we want to pick the portion of the entity that we want to go away so because this is a circle this line is connected to this line so we can select either here or here and it went away. And do the same here. Escape out of the command. Zoom extents and you can see we're only left with these portions of those circles. We can now erase these cutting edges. We don't need them anymore. Enter. So it's beginning to look like a plan view but we need to add some more symbols. 
for instance, we have some monumentation in the drawing. We have a drill hole here, and you can see I transferred the elevation um, to my note, and I zeroed out the elevation. If I double click on it, you can see that the Z elevation is zero. But I want to put a symbol there that denotes drill hole. Well, Carlson has a symbol library, and it can be found uh, by selecting this icon, which is my preferred method. Uh, you can also go under Draw, Symbols, Insert Symbols, and it will bring up a dialog that allows you to select which layer you want that symbol on, what size you want the symbol, but let's start by selecting which uh, symbol we'd like to use. You'll find those under the points menu selection and we're just going to scroll down until we see a circle within a circle. I like that. I'm going to set my symbol size to 1 and I like that it's going to go on the final layer but if we if we preferred we could have another layer called monumentation it's um, it's completely controlled by, by you. If this symbol happened to be a, a triangle or a rectangle you might want to be prompted for rotation because rotation would be important but in our case we don't really care so I don't need it to ask me that. And when I'm done I say OK and down here at the command line it says pick point or give me the point number that you want to attach this symbol to. So we can clearly see in the drawing the point number is 73 so that's what I'm going to do 73 and it drew the symbol. We can repeat that same process for our other monumentation draw, symbols, insert symbol. I'm going to use the same symbol that we used the last time which is it's defaulted to. I'm going to say OK. This time rather than giving it the number I'm going to pick it. If I have my snaps turned on that's not going to be a problem. And when you have two points that are this close together, be careful and make sure that you pick the right one. Okay. I also knew that I had a rebar on the back of the lot. So I'm going to come back, symbol. This time I'm going to change the symbol to um, do, do this one. 34. I don't need rotation so I don't have it selected. Say OK. Pick it. It's done. Now you'll notice I'm still in that command. It's going to let me place as many of these symbols as I need to until I escape or hit enter. So I'm going to pan over to the other corner of the lot because I know I had another rod, iron rod there. I'm going to pick that point. So now we have some of the monumentation um, in the drawing with a symbol. There's more that we can do there. I have my benchmarks uh, that I can uh, I could add some symbols to. But before we wrap this session up, I'd like to show you how easily Carlson handles contouring. Now, make sure that you have adjusted all of your elevation data, or as much as you remembered, prior to contouring. Because if you don't, it's going to do some strange things, and you're going to wonder, why is it doing that? And you'll discover that a particular point may have a bad elevation but that'll become obvious. 
Okay, we don't need that line, so I'm going to erase it. So one of the first things that I like to do is I like to enclose all of the points in a polyline so that my contours don't extend beyond it. Uh, let me show you how it handles point data that is unconstrained, meaning there's no polyline around the perimeter. We do contouring by going to the surface menu command. Triangulate and contour is the selection we want to make. And it brings up a dialog and it has a great deal of option. And most of them you won't um, you won't be concerned with. The contour interval is definitely something that you'll use regularly. Uh, depending on whether you're working on a subdivision, and we're really not geared to talking about how surveyors do their work, but um, trying to focus more on how uh, a septic system design is put together, you're going to use two foot intervals. You may for design purposes I want to see one foot intervals but you might place those on a different layer and choose to turn those off but in general we're going to use two foot contours and it says do you want to draw an index contour now the index contour would be every 10 foot increment and would you like it to be a different width. Uh, so we'll say yes and just to illustrate and we'll put in point 0.3 as a, as a width. So every 10 foot interval, uh, at every 10 foot interval there'll be a thicker contour line. You don't have to do this. Uh, this is just for visual effect. And then we need to pick the contour smoothing method because what it's going to do is it's going to draw polylines for these contours and if we say no smoothing it's going to draw very pointed corners and it won't look very realistic so I typically will pick either Bezier smoothing and you can pick polynomial smoothing uh, I haven't used it very often and I find that busier smoothing gives me everything that I typically will need to do so we're not going to talk about either of those other choices so with busier smoothing you can you have a slide here and you can control just how much smoothing is going to take place now notice the little illustration when the smoothing factor is at one the corners are very sharp as we move to the right you'll find that the smoothing factor is exaggerated and when we get to the far right the factor 10 I find that some strange things happen like you'll notice in this illustration sometimes contour lines will begin to cross so I don't typically like to use anything over 8 which happened to be the way it opened 